All right. Good evening and welcome to the regular city council meeting of Monday, March 25th, 2019. Can we have the roll call, please? Council Member Condit? Here. Council Member DeRosset? Here. Vice Mayor Rhino? Here. Council Member Klein? Here. And Mayor Vieira? Here. Next, we will have the invocation by, is it Jim Solak? I'll let you pronounce it from the Harvest Presbyterian, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Great. Thanks for inviting me to pray. Join with me. Uh, gracious and loving God, watcher over all of human endeavors, supplier of all our needs, uh, we thank you for the many and, and abundant blessings that you give us. How wonderful it is to be alive at this time and this place and how marvelous it is to live in such a vibrant community with friends and family. For the awesome beauty and spellbinding wonder of nature, we give you humble thanks. And God, you are attentive to the many complex issues and challenges that face us. So we pray for our mayor and this assembled council, and for the many city workers charged with carrying out policies, grant them wisdom and guidance and compassion and creativity. We pray your blessing on our deliberations and decisions made here tonight, that they may be just and good. To that end, we pray that you would grant each person here a listening ear, clarity of speech, a passion for justice, wisdom, courage, and joy. We pray for the agenda set before us tonight. May what is said and done here please you and benefit all those who live and work in and around our beloved city of Ceres. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jim. We have no presentations this evening, so we will move to citizens' communication to council on matters not included on the agenda. While the city council welcomes and encourages participation in city council meetings, adopted rules allow no more than five minutes for expression of non-agenda items. Matters under the jurisdiction of the city council and not under the posted agenda may be addressed by the general public. However, California law prohibits the city council from taking action on any matter which is not on the posted agenda unless it is determined to be an emergency by the city council. Citizens are entitled to address the city council on any agenda item subject to the five minute provision. At this time, I will start with the blue speaker cards. Um, I, the first one I have is Olga. Good evening, Mayor Vieira, city council members, uh, residents. My name is Olga Castaneda, and I'm with the Series Library at 2250 Magnolia Street. Libraries help to transform people's lives. Uh, we do it every day by providing access to services, information, and also programs. Some of the, some of the services that we provide is uh, free Wi-Fi, computer access, online resources. We also subscribe to premium databases, which help with homework, finding jobs, and for any personal endeavor. All of the services are free thanks to the one-eighth of a cent dedicated sales tax. Some of the, some of the uh, an addition to the services is that we have knowledgeable staff ready to answer questions in person, via email, and also over the phone. Lastly, programs. Uh, we offer a variety of programs. Uh, coming up in April, we will be offering five programs for adults. Two of them will be uh, on financial literacy. And we have a, a monthly program for teens and a weekly program for children. At the end of April, we're gonna be celebrating the Day of the Child, Day of the Book, and we're gonna be doing a book, a new book giveaway. And many of our programs are, uh, we are able to offer them thanks to the generosity of the friends of the series library. And we are just encouraging everyone to use uh, their series library. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Frank Johnson. Good 
Good evening, Mayor, Council. Frank Johnson, former president of the NAACP, president and CEO of the National Association for the Advancement of All People. There's an old saying that sometimes you can agree to disagree. And we are creatures of habit. Sometimes you, you see change and we don't like change. Sometimes we don't even want change. And the problem can always be solved if you know what the problem is. A lot of times we don't understand that we or I could be the problem, and I'll never admit to that. <laughs> but change has taken place only because sometimes you have to step aside and let it take place. We can always interject ourselves into something good, something bad, or just stand there in the middle and point both directions. But resolution and resolve comes when you move yourself out the way. With that being said, I haven't been around for many years, but I've been watching. Now it's time to recognize those who have stepped up and kept their word and I'm really honored to be here tonight. Can I have Chief Rep. Smith come forward? There's no way I can let you go, especially out of uniform. Under your command, your watch, as you have stood fast with your word. Many changes have taken place. You have brought much peace to the city. It's an honor to know you. I don't have my glasses on, but maybe you can read that for me. So this says, uh, on behalf of the National Association for the Advancement of All People Youth Department, we honor Sirius Police Department Chief Brent Smith. In recognition for your dedication and commitment to the advancement of all people, you are held in high regard and very much appreciated. Next, Phil Blanton. If I may, I have a, an illustration for, for each of you. Could you hand it to the city clerk, please? Thank you. Greetings to you tonight. I stand before you as a proud business owner and I'm part owner in a business called the California Outlaws LLC. We are a company, we pay taxes. We got our business license a year ago and it's coming up at the end of the month. And what I have there for you is just an illustration of some of the cost for us to do business in your city. We're proud to pay all the fees. We're proud to pay all the taxes and we're just getting started. And we hope to grow our business even bigger than it is right now because we're beyond the city walls. We go all over uh, this area in Central Valley. But what I wanna bring to your attention is we've run into a dilemma. There are so many bands out there performing and they're not businesses. They don't have business license. They don't pay taxes to the state. They don't pay taxes to their city that they're from. So they're going all over the place making money and pocketing every dime 
and every dollar. We're not. We're paying taxes and proud to pay because that means our, we're, we're making money, income. And we put on a great show. We have a sound company as well. We've, we've played for shows $200 for some chambers and we played a $5,600 show for another chamber. So the money varies, but we pay our taxes and we got them all paid up. We even paid the first quarter before I even got the official business license. So we paid for a quarter that we didn't even have a license. Proud to do it, happy to give it to you. You got a great city and that is our concern is, what about all these other bands that you're missing out on revenue? Tax revenue, business license and so on that the city could surely use. And we kind of feel like it's not fair on people like us that want to do everything correctly. And should I renew the business license at the end of the month? Do, do we need it? Because it seems as though we don't. But I like telling people that we are a legitimate business and we have our business license in the city of Ceres. That brings me pride. And I just wanted to express that to you to get you thinking about the dollars and cents that are passing you by. Thank you. Mr. Wells, a question for you on that. Um, do we, when somebody rents a venue, one of our facilities, do we require the band to have a business license or do you know? I don't know off the top of my head. This is the first I've heard of this issue. Okay. So. Obviously, we'll do some research and we'll go okay. back to council. Okay, thank you. Um, next, Steve Mooney. Good evening, Mayor, council guys. Uh, basically, the same thing that he just said. The clubs are definitely not hiring bands with the license. I don't know no band around the area that has a license. And I, what they're doing, they're taking one guy and one guy's eating all the taxes and there's one guy out there right now that's actually hiring scavenger musicians and paying them out of his pocket and he's eating all the taxes to the government so in other words they make the check out to that guy so if you make the check out to california outlaws we can cash it you make it out to steve mooney then i'm the one eating the taxes but i have the check made out to california outlaws so therein lies our and we've got people undercutting us. Uh, the clubs don't want to pay us what we want. Uh, I tried to explain to them, we have a business license. We have to charge you this. Well, I can get this, these guys for 350 bucks. Well, go get them. That's what they're doing. Thank you, guys. Give us a little bit of time. We'll look into this, and then we'll, we'll see what we can do. Okay. Is there... Um, what, what I'll do is, um, let me see if your contact information is on here. Um, yes, it is. So I'll hand this to the city clerk, and then as we get some information, we'll, we'll make sure that you're made aware of, of what's going on. So if you could hand those. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, at this time, I'm out of the blue speaker cards. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to the council on a non-agenda item? If so, please come forth and state your name. Okay, seeing none, we will move on. Uh, we have no appointments to boards and commissions this evening. Conflict of interest declaration. Is there anyone on the council that would like to declare a conflict of interest on any of the 10 uh, consent calendar items? Okay, hearing none, we will move to the consent calendar. All matters listed on the consent calendar are considered routine in nature and will be enacted by a single motion unless otherwise requested by a council member, excuse me, individual council member or the public for special consideration. Otherwise, recommendation of staff will be accepted and acted upon by a roll call vote. At this time, is there anyone on the council that would like a consent calendar item pulled for further discussion? Number 10. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to have a consent calendar item pulled other than item 10? Okay, I'll bring it back to the council for direction on the first nine items. Move to approve one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, D, E, six, seven, eight, and nine. Second. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second. Can we have the roll call vote, please? Council Member Condit? Aye. Council Member DeRossett? Yes. Vice Mayor Rhino? Yes. Council Member Klein? Yes. And Mayor Vieira? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Okay, uh, item number 10, resolution number 2019-38, approval of the exception of, to the 180-day wait period per government code section 7522.56 and approve a retirement annuity agreement with Brent Smith. Council Member Klein? Well, you know, after reading, after reading the resolution and, and doing some little soul searching on this matter, you know, I know that at one time there was some ses session planning uh, in progress uh, with, you know, Captain, Captain Collins. Uh, you know, I, I believe Chief Smith has done an exceptional job with uh, what he's done as far as uh, changing some of the things within the department and making it his, his, his own. Uh, and there's been some discussion over the course of the last probably six months or so when Chief Smith was going to retire. With that being said, uh, I cannot support this resolution. Uh, I feel that, you know, Chief Smith decided to, you know, move up his retirement date to March instead of uh, June. That I feel that, you know, with giving Captain Collins, uh, you know, an ample uh, opportunity without having to look over his shoulder, having the, the men and women be below him, uh, asking Chief Smith, you know, any questions or anything like that, and them trying to collaborate. I think it's time for, you know, Captain Collins to make it his department. So uh, with that being said, uh, I cannot support the resolution. Vice Mayor Rhino. Well, I was perplexed as well as to why we would need a transition when the last staff report we got where we um, were asked to approve the um, contract with Captain Collins as the chief stated he'd been the second in command for five years, he'd been in the department for 22 years, and I think pretty much everyone knew that Chief Smith would be leaving shortly, so there should have been some sort of training going on. And then I compare it to when Chief Wise was appointed as fire chief and there wasn't a transition period. And when Mr. Westbrook became the planning director, I don't believe there was a transition as well as Ms. Dean when she became the finance director. Um, I, I personally believe that Captain Collins can step right in. I've talked to him and He's assured me, and even if he hadn't have assured me, I have to believe that he could do it. I have another concern with the amount of money that it would cost, and I think the staff report said that there are budgetary impacts. What, Ms. Dean, can you tell me what those are, the budgetary impacts? Um, I've... Um not, I didn't bring anything with me because I wasn't expecting any questions. Um, I had had a discussion with Mr. Collins today, so I, I can give you approximate numbers. Okay. Um, I have done some analysis with the police budget and the staffing portion personnel costs I'm estimating will be over budget by approximately 129,000. Uh, this is um, primarily due to the amount of 48.50 time, the workers comp and the um, uh, cash outs for employees that have retired this year. Um, I did factor in uh, savings from uh, Chief Smith leaving, and I also factored in um, some savings from another employee that had left, um, and I'm still coming up with that $129,000 deficit. And as uh, Captain Collins and I discussed, I don't see anything in the remainder of their budget that can make that up. Um, he still has three months where he can make the changes necessary, um, but it would be my recommendation to do a budget amendment now for the approximate cost of the contract with Chief Smith. And would that be general fund money? Where would we where would we make that transfer from? It would be general fund appropriation. So would it be out of our reserves? Yes. Okay. Those are my only questions, and I would agree that I would not be able to support it. Okay. Um. Just a question of clarification. 
So the $129,000 that you talk about was, uh, what percentage of that was the, the retirement impact? Um, about $103,000 um, between Chief Smithson and um, one of the other officers that retired. And those- uh, So we're really not talking about a $129,000 impact. We're talking about an advanced portion because we were gonna have to pay that in June anyway, right? Uh, well, it, no, not necessarily. Originally, Chief Smith was going to retire at the beginning of the next fiscal year, so that payout would have come in the next fiscal year, and I would have budgeted it. But, but we the, still would have been hit with it. It didn't, doesn't. I mean, I understand the budgeting process, but it, the number still is the number, correct? The number is still the number. Yes. Okay. So I mean, it's so it, it's still. It's not like we are saving that amount of money. We, we're getting hit with it, whether we budget it for it or we didn't budget it. Right. I, okay. I, I just wanted. Clarification on that. Uh, Councilmember Condit? Sure. I, I was curious, is there any historical precedence with this action? Uh, not in our agency. With other agencies, this is relatively common, but in our agency, we have not had uh, the resources, and this is uh, probably the only department we have within the city that has um, any depth where you could actually have this type of arrangement, which, you know, the, the reason why we were proposing it is it provides for a smooth and orderly transition to assure that we've got everything covered. We normally would have a little more time, and, you know, as I've, I've mentioned to council, this is it's not a have to have. Obviously, Captain Collins is uh, willing and ready to step into that role. Uh, it's a nice to have, and the ability to have a smooth and orderly transition. Um, other departments see the value in that, and some have gone that route, but uh, it's, it's not unique, but again, it's not, hasn't been done in our department. So is this uh, being, being treated as like a retirement bonus or a severance package or how? This is, this is purely following the government code section, which is to prohibit that type of activity. This is purely an opportunity that is seen from a staff perspective as a win-win for the employee and the city in terms of having that um, orderly transition. Um, he was originally planning in a July 1 or June 1st retirement based on his personal situation. That changed and moved up. Um, again, it was an operational opportunity that was worth exploring, um, but again, it's a clear policy di direction from the council, and if you're not interested in pursuing it, um, we'll, we'll make the change and we'll move and transition on the fly. It's not, not an issue either way. So, and uh, Captain Collins, um, are you fully confident in starting April 1st if need be? Okay, thank you. Um, I think that's a, a, an interesting point, but uh, I can ask, answer your question. We have actually done, um, I think it was the term you talked, retirement ad advancement. I think we did that for um, uh, Vice Mayor Rhino's husband just before he retired. We promoted him, I believe, as a retirement right. benefit. I remember um, when uh, uh, then Mayor Canella was here, we, we took those steps. So it has been done. Um, but I don't think that was the case here. Um, my only comment to this is, originally I believe Chief Smith was, was scheduled to work through the end of uh, June. You know, he's been gracious enough to say that he would stay on. Um, you know, I can only speak to my experience sitting on other boards um, for instance, uh, we just had a turnover of the CEO for the Air District, uh, and the transition was from January to July, where the existing CEO stayed on while the new CEO worked in that role, and it wasn't somebody from the outside, it was somebody that had been with the organization for 20 years. So uh, that transition went relatively smoothly. Um, but again, if, if, if this council doesn't want to, to do that, then uh, that's their prerogative. I just don't see it as a big, as big of an issue as um, I, I, I think we're making out. So uh, again, I, I just want to point out that um, I don't want people to get hung up on his retirement early is hitting us an additional amount of money because we still were going to get hit with that amount of money, whether he retired now or in June. It's just where that fell in the budgeting process. So, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, I, I don't get hung up on, on if, if staff believes it's good for the transition of the city, that's what I would support, so. Mayor, I, I just want to say one thing. 
and you know that uh, obviously uh, Captain Collins is ready to be chief. There's no doubt about that. And I just want everyone out here to know that this is we're talking about April 26th, and it doesn't matter to me whichever way you decide to do it. It's only a few weeks, so I'm not trying to stay on for any length of time. And uh, like I said, it's up, it's obviously up to you, and I'm fine either way. Okay. Councilmember Drossi. Yeah, I'd just like to thank you for even wanting to stay on. You know, at the same time, what a great career you had, obviously here in series for all those years. Um, you know, the staff brings this to us, and the staff is the one that basically said that this is what they believe is good for the city of Ceres. And I know, Captain Collins, you're ready to go and everything else. Obviously, you didn't know it was going to happen this quick, and you're telling me it was only until April something that you would even be in that role helping and assisting our city. So when I sit there and look at it, I look at our city, I look at what's important, probably the number two job role, no offense, Captain Wise and Chief Wise in, in, re, in regards to fire and police, you know, but this is a huge role. And I know that you're ready to step in and, and ready to go, but I support staff's direction on this. I know this municipality maybe has only had one other time, but the school districts, they do it all the time where you have a principal and you have another vice principal coming on board and you have a principal over here. And again, I'm using apples and oranges from the school district, which I understand to city, right? But at the same time too, I wish you the best. And uh, you know, I, I support this staff recommendation, so. Okay, any other comments? At this time, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this item? John Warren, um, I think the city would be remiss not taking the chance to gain this extra experience, even though it's going to be for two or three months. We're talking to the 1st of July. Obviously, it's not an extended period of time, and it's not a great deal of money. The experience is what's going to benefit the series going forward. And I think uh, the council should take that into some serious consideration. Please do that. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Okay, I'll bring it back to the council for direction. Yeah, I move to approve resolution number 2019-38. Okay, well, since I see someone, I, 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 I'm able to say make a second motion, so I will. I'll second. Okay. With yep. that, uh, we have a motion and a second. Can we have the roll call vote, please? Council Member Condit? Nay. Council Member DeRosset? Yes. Vice Mayor Rhino? No. Council Member Klein? No. And Mayor Vieira? Yes. Motion fails. It is three to two. Okay. Um, we have no unfinished business this evening, no public hearing, no new business, and we have one discussion item, bulky item pickup program overview. Mr. Wells. Thank you, Mayor Vieira. Uh, at our goal setting meeting back on February 8th, um, Mayor Vieira asked for a discussion item uh, on the bulky item process. Um, so what's in the staff report I'll cover um, just as a high level also for the audience. The, the bulky item uh, program uh, is a program designed for single family homes within the city of Ceres. Uh, they receive garbage service. As part of that program, twice a year, a resident is allowed to call in, schedule an appointment for the pickup of bulky items that fit the criteria. Uh, this program has been in place for a number of years, um, and as mentioned in the staff report, the, the volume uh, that's been um, picked up on an annual basis has, has continually grown, um, just for the audience purposes, in, in 2014, the annual tonnage was 226 tons, um, and then this past year, for 2018, it was 520 tons. So a pretty significant um, growth in the program, which you know tells you there's, there's a lot of folks that are utilizing this program. Um, you know, there's obviously some challenges with it, and those are what we've been working with Bertolotti uh, and their staff to try and mitigate some of the challenges in the program that, that is clearly being successful as it's, a, it's eliminating quite a bit of waste and debris that ends up uh, in our friends, like uh, Board of Supervisors Jim DiBartiti knows. Uh, there, there's lots of dumps in the county, and they have a full-time staff that runs around 40 hours a week. Um, it's all they do is picking up illegal dumps in the county. So, um, and you know what most people suspect is for those cities that don't have a program 
like this, um, the dumping that happens around their communities is likely higher. Um, and that's one of the challenges that we face with this, this type of a program. Well, one, it's successful, but two, it's successful. So you got a blessing and a curse almost. So in working with Bertolotti, um, what we've um, kind of reviewed all of 2018 and how the program was working in 2018. And so the way it works um, is a person calls in to get scheduled and the capacity that Bertolotti, Bertolotti had for 2018 was scheduling for 40 pickups per week. So when someone called in, say on a Monday, um, they wanted to schedule a bulky item pickup, you would, they would put their name on that list and once the, the list was full, they go to the next week. And so right now for 2018, that was picked up on a Tuesday. So if somebody called on a Monday and they were number 41, they would go to that following week until that list was full and it just kind of rolled. So looking at that, we recognized there were some challenges. That time frame was stretching out a little bit longer than you know, seven to 10 days. It was more like two weeks. So in working with Bertolotti, they've increased their capacity for this year. We just started um, where they have 50 um, that are allowed to pick up on a weekly basis. Um, so far, we're seeing that window sh shrink a little bit from a seven to 10 days. We've also recognized that there's an education process that's necessary. This council has um, you know, indicated that same challenge. So what we've been working with is a way to kind of educate you know, the citizens on how the program works and, and the right way to follow the program. So Berlotti has come up with a, a call a little fact sheet um, and a program sheet that's that's in the council package this evening um, that is set up like if anyone's bought a house recently or done an online document, it's set up that someone can actually go on there and you'll have to initial three spots on the form and then sign it and you can do it electronically or by hand um, to be able to kind of recognize the program rules because we're, we're finding that folks don't realize you can't put the bulky items out there and then call for scheduling because that's what, what folks are doing that creates the problem. They'll put it out on a Saturday and then they'll call on Monday for a schedule that may be one or two weeks out and that's what creates the aesthetic that we're all trying to fight against where you have a bulky item pickup sitting on the curb for two weeks and that's what we're trying to get away from. Um, so we're hoping uh, with implementation of both of these uh, changes that will, you know, one, shrink the time frame, um, and two, educate folks on the process so they follow the rules properly and we minimize, you know, that aesthetic challenge that we all have that, you know, we're, we're also trying to combat the illegal dumps and as a reference in the staff report for 2018, we <laughs> averaged about four per week. Um, you know, what's not captured in there that's sometimes difficult is uh, We'll call it the pile creep, right? Someone puts a bulky item out there and then someone else comes and adds a few things to it uh, or a few more or a few more. So that's, that's hard to capture how many times that happens. We all know with some evidence of that that does happen, um, but we are able to um, you know, efficiently work to combine those two programs, the bulky item and the illegal dumps, to coordinate as efficiently as possible um, the pickup of those things at the same time. So that's in working with Bertolotti as our partner, we've been able to, to do that for this past year, probably a little more seamlessly, and you can kind of see that a little bit in the numbers as we're you know, seeing that volume increase more so than we've had in the past. So um, Steve from Bertolotti is here this evening. He's, he's willing to uh, have any, answer any questions you may have, but that's kind of the program overview. If there were some specific questions or some direction, um, you know, we do feel like we've made some adjustments to the program this year that will, will help to get the program more effective. Um, but we're at this point, and again, just kind of a, getting the information out to the community as well as the council and look for any direction or thoughts you may have. Vice Mayor Rhino. I have a question for Mr. Holloway. I'm going to jog his memory because I can't remember. <laughs> a long time ago when we had the pickups over at the dehydrator, you know, the, the empty lot across from the bus barn on Magnolia, were you here then? I thought uh, you'd been here like forever. I've been close to 25 years. Do you remember when we did that before bulky item and it would be either... We, we had to clean up at at our yard over on Flamingo. And prior to that, they used to have it over there, but mm -hmm. you weren't here then. No, I was no. just curious if you would have known why we switched from that to the bulky item, because that seemed always really successful, and you didn't, then you wouldn't have all the trash out in front of people's houses. Uh, it's mo mostly this, uh, how much has grown. I mean, the last year, the bulky item, uh, was probably eight to ten years ago. Um, the tonnage totals for that for a year were 20, 2,100 tons. Uh, the last year, pretty much, we held it all week long at our, our facility, um, and it pretty much, uh, de not devastated, but I mean, we, we were full by the end of the week. I mean, just our whole yard. Um, there was quite, quite a bit of abuse, I, I feel, 
Uh, there was people out at the pay phones calling friends in series, you know, with, that were from Keys that had trailers, uh, you know, uh, just packed, you know, trying to get free, free dumps. Um, it was a pretty well, well known, well, well, well known uh, clean, cleanup. Um, there were people that were, that would save their trash type thing. Um, once we went from that, you can see in 2014, we're down to 226 tons from almost 2,100 tons. <laughs> um, so a tenth of that. Um, so th there was, I, I feel quite a bit of abuse going on. Um, and it was just th those times of years. I mean, you had to clean up on a specific date. Uh, it didn't always work for everyone. Um, you know, as far as even on the one on Magnolia. Um, so for convenience and, uh, you, you know, we went to the bulky item program, pretty much all, sit, all nine cities have uh, in the county, except uh, Newman, Newman still has a, a cleanup. Uh, they bring in pretty much close to the tons, just about 500 tons a year, and they are um, probably 20, 20, 25% your size but they're, they're generating the same thing. I mean, down there we have people to come in with, with barns that they've uh, you know, t taken down, yet they, they give an address where there's an obviously not a barn at. You know? um, so I, I, I think it's a good program. It allows people to get, away, get rid of their, you know, quote, bulky items that you know, they, they can't fit in their can, they can't haul, you know, they have trouble hauling to us couches, um, refrigerators, that type of thing. Um, we, we, back when we started, we were a little bit over 100 tons a year, um, and we started out with four, tw 20, 20 appointments a week. Now we're, we're up to 40 appointments a week. Um, as of last November, it got out to where it, we're almost three, three, three weeks out. So in theory, you could have 120 piles sitting out there for up to three weeks, you know, or at a time. If someone was was putting it out and then calling it in, or like say, you know, I'm gonna clean up this weekend, so I'm gonna call in this week, well, I'm put off two weeks. So then my pile sits out there for two weeks, and I know anytime I drive around something that sits for more than a week, you know, I start thinking, well, you know, it's either a legal dump or something's going on. So we, we've tried to, uh, to bring to increase the number of uh, appointments to 50, uh, move the date to Monday, so that you know it's close, you know it's closer to the weekend, um, and we're, we're we're ready to put on either a Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, um, in addition to Monday. I, I I would like to to get it down to where if you were to call in today, you could get picked up next week, and it would just be a week out. So. There you would have, you know, if everyone put it out early, you'd have 50 piles out. But I mean, that's not, not the case. But if we can whittle down that wait time, then, then I think that uh, then we'll have less piles out there, less, uh, less time for them to grow, um, you know, less questioning by the public, you know, what is that, an illegal dump or, you know, it's just not being picked up. Um, we have between that and the illegal brush piles that we have, um, it, you know, it makes for a, a pretty full day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. So, uh, are we good with these changes? Is that? Or yeah. At this point, it was it's informational items. Um, unless council wants to give us some direction or something else, would you like I, a, I'd a follow up in six months? We come back with some yeah. information. Um, Let, let's see how it works, yep. and then we can reevaluate it in six months. Yeah, we'll flag that for six months, and we'll we'll keep monitoring. And we're we're meeting um, monthly now with Bertolotti, just kind of getting their feedback and trying to get those things. You know, some of these other challenges likely will be coming back in a few months. There's some other challenges at the state level. Councilmember Rhino brought up a, a few weeks back the uh, recycle market, uh, worldwide recycle market is challenged. You're starting to see some articles in the New York Times, the Washington Post. Um, the, the market has made a fundamental shift, um, and basically China and the other countries are not 
are no longer taking recycled plastics. So the whole market is shifting and there's a bunch of legislation that's pending this year that which will likely lead to some changes in our CAN system. So Bertolotti, we've been discussing how we'll deal with you know, the leaf and limb, the grass clippings, the garbage, the recycle, and then the latest push from the state is the organic. So there'll likely be some change and we'll, we'll see how the, the legislation kind of plays out this summer because it likely will shift how we do things in the future. So we don't want to go make a change there and then have to change it again with some legislation that we, we feel is going to happen this probably most likely this summer. So we'll be back talking about that part of the program as well. So just give me a little, little teaser that that's coming. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we'll, we'll move to council member referrals. Does anyone on the council have an item they'd like to have placed on a future agenda? Okay, we none uh, reports. Uh, I have nothing to report, council member Klein. Chief Smith, I just want to thank you very much for the role that you stepped into, how you made the department your own, the changes that you made with the dispatch center uh, the technology that you brought forth, how you worked with SR911 as far as system upgrades uh, and things like that to advance the department. Uh, I want to thank you for your loyalty. Um, you know, you've been, you've been here with the department for a, a number of years. Um, I believe you started here uh, and you've stayed here and you've watched yourself grow and uh, moved all the way up to being the chief. I think that as this body uh, about five years ago, I think it was the right decision that we made. And I think you've done an excellent job with, with taking care of the department and making it your own. Uh, I just thank you very much for the service that you gave to this community. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I also want to thank the council for the support you've given me and uh, most of you up there chose me to be chief and uh, I tell you it's been a it's been rough we, we've gone through some tough times but uh, I think that this police department is uh, we, it's definitely got some great people in it and uh, I look forward to seeing what chief Collins is going to do it's his turn now thank you okay vice mayor Rhino and I can't add anything other than what Council Member Klein said, other than thank you. Council Member Drossel? Thank you. We played baseball together, remember that? With Jim Marcus, yes. 10 years of age. <laughs> Council Member Cotter? I can't help but echo my colleagues' uh, statements about you, uh, Chief Smith. You're a stand up uh, man. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your service to this city. And um, like I said, wish you and your family the best of luck. Also, I'll be uh, conducting my normal office hours here at the community center every Saturday between 12 and 2 p.m. Hope to see you out there. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Dean? Thank you, Mayor. Um, the recruitment for the deputy finance director position has concluded, and uh, the number one candidate turned out to be uh, Letitia Diaz, who was the accountant for the city of Ceres for 21 years. Uh, she left to go work for the city of Oakdale as the accounting manager, and she's coming back April 8th as our deputy director. Great. Tom? If I say Albert Oakdale, I'm happy. <laughs> well, they took her the first time, so he took her back, so <laughs> exactly. Mr. Wells? Yeah, uh, Brian White, minor in Oakdale. He hasn't talked to me since he found out, but we'll work we're just returning the favors. We all trade, so it's all good. Um, we're excited to have her have her back. A um, couple items uh, as we get closer to, to uh, 2020, um, an important year in the federal government's eyes on the census that happens every year. So there's a couple items related to that. Um, there's a kickoff meeting on April 1st at noon at the 10th Street Plaza. Um, Mr. Westbrook and myself have been uh, kind of monitoring the activities on the census. There's uh, a couple groups out there that are um, gearing up and working on getting getting the word out of how the census program is working and um, you know getting every vote counts. You know, every, everything turned back in has a lot to do with how the federal funds are reapportioned to our area. So um, important in that respect, we'll likely have a resolution uh, here in the near future for the council acknowledging uh, that census and getting the word out. So uh, more to follow on that, uh, kind of in a um, similar vein as part of the 2020 census, there's also a citizens redistricting. Uh, the state of California, the state auditor's office is looking for volunteers 
um, to uh, be appointed to that committee that helps on the redistricting effort after that census is completed. So there's some information that we'll put on our website uh, on both of those activities. Um, <coughs> Uh, another call for volunteers, the uh, Stanislaus County Civil Grand Jury. Uh, it's that time of the year where they're looking for the next folks to serve. So if you're interested on that, the um, Stanislaus County Grand Jury website has uh, the information on how you can apply for that. And then lastly, the uh, next 2 plus 2 meeting with the school district is uh, next Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. with Council Members Klein and DeRosset. So thank you, Chair. I remind you, since you guys a calendar appointment uh, this morning. So. <laughs> that's it. Tom? Just a reminder, the Recreation Division will be hosting another artist spotlight. This is going to feature Keith Meyer on Thursday, April 11th at 5.30 p.m. in the Community Center. Daniel? Brent? Rick? Kevin? Uh, March 14th, we held our badge pinning for our two new firefighters. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Klein and Condit for attending. It uh, went really well. We held it at Station 15 in the Apparatus Bay. It turned out really nice. One of our new firefighters is here. His name is uh, Chad Martin. And uh, we have one more vacancy, so we're going through the hiring process right now for our last and final firefighter in all positions. Great. Bettina? Jeremy? Supervisor D. Martini? Nothing. Okay. I think I got everyone there. So with that, we will move to closed session. Um, following that, we will adjourn to our next regularly scheduled meeting, which will be Monday, April 8th, 2019. Thank you.